The following podcast was recorded on Thursday, July 7, 2022, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, we look forward to hearing the latest on forward curves. To get this started, what are forward curves and what are they saying? Okay, so forward curves are a simple concept with a lot of math. You know, if you have a two-year yield and you have a one-year yield, you can figure out what the one-year yield will be in one year. So you take today's one-year yield, the one-year yield in one year, that it would equal the two-year yield. And you can slice and dice the yield curve all different kind of ways. What will the 90-day rate be in two years? Well, you take the one and three quarters rate rate, the 21 month rate and the 24 month rate. And then you figure out what three month rate you need in 21 months in order to equal the 24 month rate and so on and so on and so on. So a lot of people look at the forward rate curves and they think and as an expression from the market of what they think about the future of interest rates. So if we go to the first chart, uh, this shows the Fed fund futures, which is a form of the forward rate curve. It puts it in a simpler format. Um, so it tells you where does the market anticipate the Fed funds will be in certain periods of time, monthly over the next couple of years. And this is derived from the forward rate curve. And it's also easily arbitraged to the forward rate curve. So you'll hear people talk about overnight index swaps or the euro dollar futures curve or the fed fund futures curve as predicting where the fed is going to be they all should say exactly the same thing because they're easily arbitraged among each other if they say different things then we've got a somewhat dysfunctional market so to keep it simple i'll use the fed fund futures curve so <clears throat> this shows you the blue line shows you where the fed fund futures curve was on June 14th, the day before the Fed raised 75 basis points. It peaked with a funds rate of 4.06%, or let's call it slightly over 4%, in May 2023. This is what Wall Street calls the terminal funds rate. Where's the Fed going to stop raising rates? Uh, that nut rate has come down January 5th, is last time we updated it. Yesterday's numbers are virtually the same as the 5th. It had dropped down to 329 in February. And you could see that June 30th, just the end of the quarter, was somewhere in the middle of 344. So that kind of shows you where the forward curve was looking at it. To look at it in a more traditional way, let's look at the next chart. This shows you the swaps market. And what do you do in the swaps market? Same thing as you do. What, what will the one-year rate be in one year, looking at the two-year rate and the one-year rate? And there's almost an endless number of iterations you could do with this. So I pulled out two of them. In six months, what does the overnight index swap, OIS, think the three-month rate is going to be? That's the orange line. 327 was the last plot. And in one year, what does the three-month rate look like according to the overnight index swap? That's the blue line, 286. So it's falling. The bottom chart shows you the difference between the two. And you could see how that is ab abruptly turned around. On the 15th, it went negative. That's the red part of the chart. And by the 6th, yesterday, it was at minus 40 basis points. In other words, what the market seems to be pricing in is that the Fed will stop raising rates somewhere in a three-handle, somewhere around the end of the year, the beginning of next year, uh, according to the Fed Fund Futures in this, and start cutting rates in 2023. This has become a very popular narrative for people to talk about on Wall Street. Jim, what is the track record? So what this is, is this is Wall Street's consensus pricing. We have lots of examples of consensus pricing on Wall Street. Earnings, we look at earning, median earnings forecasts, we look at payroll reports, we look at CPI reports, 
even in the election, in the elections, we look at the betting markets on elections, and these are the consensus opinion. That is very valuable information to look at, to figure out where people think the outcome of an event will be. But that doesn't mean that that will be the outcome of that event, that uh, it, will, it will diverge a lot. Now you also like to say the, the key to investing is where is the consensus? They think rates are going to be cut a lot next year. Where are you and are you different from the consensus? If you are, you have an opportunity. If your thinking is right in line with the consensus, then what you think is priced in and there is less of an opportunity. So it doesn't mean that that's going to happen. And I wanted to give a couple of examples. Go to the first chart. Uh, that one shows you the forward Fed funds curve again um, on September 20th of last year. So roughly nine and a half months ago, <clears throat> it had all of one rate hike priced in for all of 2022, one rate hike. Now, rate hike is defined as 25 basis points. We've already done six of them. The Fed raised rates 25 basis points in March, 50 basis points in May, that's two rate hikes, 75 basis points uh, three weeks ago in June, that's three for a total of six, and is expected to raise rates. There's a 90% probability they're gonna raise rates again in July, another 75 basis points. That's nine rate hikes that we've got, we will will have in about three weeks, assuming nothing unusual happens. Whereas nine months ago, the forward rate curve said, we might get one rate hike by the end of 2022. And the funds rate, terminal funds rate will be less than 1%. Right now it's one and a half to 175, about to go into the mid twos. If you jump ahead to the next chart, this is the beginning of the year. Well, okay, at the beginning of the year, the forward curve moved up a lot more. And it was now looking that by July, we would have two rate hikes done. Uh, that's the 56 basis points you see there. Not six done and potentially three more to come. And the targeted funds rate or the terminal fund rate was going to be one and a half percent. Well, it's one and a half to one and three quarters. Remember, the funds rate's in a range right now. And if we look at the last chart on this, uh, this is March 17th, the day after the first rate hike. The forward curve had already moved all the way up to 2%. We should be above that in three weeks. And its peak was around 2.5%. Uh, and that's where we should be very close to in three and a half weeks as well. So in other words, I know people are hyperventilating. Oh, the Fed's going to cut rates next year. Well, that's what the market thinks now. But check back and let's see if that actually happens. It's valuable information because it tells you what's priced in. And if that doesn't come to pass, then there's going to be some movement in the market. I might add to people, remember exactly a month ago, um, on we're recording on July 7th, so let's go back to June 7th, a couple of days before the May CPI report, the consensus thinking in the forward rate curves were showing 50 basis points in June, 25 basis points in July, and a pause in September. That was a month ago. Where is the market now? 75 already happened in June. 75 is expected in July, and another 50 is expected in September. A radical change in the last month or so. So forward rate curves, they're good. They're like earnings estimates. They're like payroll um, median guesses. They tell you where things are, what the market expects. Does that mean because the market has priced that in that that's what is going to happen? No, not at all. As we've seen over the last nine or 10 months, Check back every month. The market has radically changed its opinion about the Fed. And usually what that radical change has been is the market has been underestimating the hawkishness of the Fed. I've argued that it has this hard or it's having a hard time believing this Fed is going to get this aggressive and raise rates and that inflation is that big a problem that the Fed is going to really go at it. Well, they have been. And the market has been dragged screaming and kicking into the belief that, no, the Fed's going to be a hell of a lot more aggressive than we thought. And at every turn, we've yet, we always see the market thinking the Fed is going to back off of its hawkishness. We are going to start cutting rates next year. That's the uh, consensus now. I've yet to see in the last 10 months where the market has priced in something too aggressive and that, no, the Fed won't ever really go there. So we're seeing more of that now. They're expecting the Fed to back off. Look, at some point they will, but this is 
to me, this is more of the same of the market not fully understanding or believing or wanting the Fed to be aggressive. And the track record is spotty. So the market is expecting the Fed to back off, check back in 60 days, check back in 90 days. Let's see if that's still the case. I have a feeling it won't be. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today. And thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions at all about Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks everyone and have a great week.